I identify as a queer, gender non-conforming, trans feminine person. Trans feminine means that like you have like transcended the gender that was assigned to you at birth, whereas a trans woman is someone who wants, believes, is a woman. I'm a non-binary, trans feminine, BDSM, diesel dyke tranny. I determine I'm not transgender because gender doesn't exist in my book. Um, I'm not transsexual because I love the body I have. My state of being is just unique. I grew up assigned male at birth. There was no way to be a pretty boy when I was growing up in the 50s. And the first time I learned about girls and boys was in nursery school when I was about four and a half and they told us to line up, girls here, boys there. And I looked at what the boys were doing, they were punching each other, and they were, rah, 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 rah. oh no. And then the girls, and they were all the cute ones. I went, yep, that's me. Do you remember when you were a kid and grown-ups gave you this look that said you're terrible? And that's what I got, and I scooted over to the boys' line and stayed in that till my mid-30s. You know, I was a queer person since I was a baby, but I never had the freedom to say who I was. There was this one Halloween that I wanted to dress like a girl, and I wasn't allowed to, but my brother was. He would dress as a woman because it was a joke, but you know, like, I think my mother like could tell that I had a genuine desire to wear her things, and that scared her. I was in third grade, I was going to a new school, and I got lice right before I had to go to school. My mom shaved my hair, and I was very muscular. These things hadn't, you know, started happening yet. And my mom put me in a red dress because she was concerned that no one would understand that I was a girl. I went by the name, my middle name, which is Danielle. So everyone started calling me Tranny Danny. And I didn't know what that was at the time. I thought that was someone who was into trains. So I wore a conductor cap for the next two years. Whenever somebody called me Tranny Danny, I'd be like, choo-choo, like all aboard. Once I realized that people were calling me Tranny Danny for a reason, I had to sit down and be like, why don't I pass? What does this mean? And in seventh grade, I um, discovered that um, there was a difference between gender and sex. Gender is a state of being. Mannerisms, cultural um, teachings, like what type of clothing you're wearing, the way that you speak, the way that you hold yourself, the type of energy that you feel in your body. I grew up in a farming like community, so it wasn't about what you have between your legs or on your chest. It was about can you pick up that bag of grain can you get that bucket of water? Can you huck that bale of hay? Because you have to be this mix of like somebody who wore Aeropostale and American Eagle, but could split firewood. <laughs> I only had half the elements. I mean, I could huck a bale of hay like no one's business, but. I came out on Facebook, which was kind of like an abrasive move because suddenly like everyone in Puerto Rico knew. So I didn't really experience the backlash myself, at least not physically in front of me. I came back to visit in December. It was the 25th. Christmas Day, and my parents didn't want me in my, in my house, in their house. Success in a gender is feeling comfortable in that gender, saying, oh God, I don't have to think about it every single minute of the day. You start with therapy, and you end up in sex reassignment surgery, is what we called it in those days. And then I was a woman, and it felt so good, finally. And then, living as a woman was very like living as a man. I had to watch women see what they were doing. I pretended to do it, I practiced, I rehearsed, but there was still tomboy about me. Over the next year, two, three, I slid into being neither. I don't believe I'm a woman, never really made it as one, but I like looking like one. That, that's fun for me. I like being cute girl. There's a comfort uh, to passing. Once you stop passing, it's, it's someone described it as walking out of the house with seven or eight hundred dollar bills pinned to your back. You're constantly, oh God, who's gonna hit me? When I'm in like the masculine clothes, I have the privilege of looking like a white, young, decent looking guy. People just feel comfortable because they know what that is. When I walk around in a dress, if I try to walk as confidently, people see it as like aggressive. I've had people follow me home, I've been mugged once. So I actually feel more empowered when I wear a dress 
but I feel a lot more comfortable in an outfit like this because I don't have to worry about it and I can focus on what I'm actually here for. In senior year, I started wearing skirts. Back then, I was just like full beard, full hairy leg, like pencil skirt, like that, 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 living, really living. I don't remember feeling fear. And I remember, and I feel it now. I was at this bar, I'm dancing. Yeah, let's just have fun with all these men, whatever. And then one of them like really starts coming for me. And he's kissing me, like biting my lips. And I'm enjoying it, you know, like I was just having fun, but at the same time I wasn't tucked. So I'm like dancing with him, but I'm kind of like, like this, <laughs> cause I didn't want to like grind out on him. But then I was like, hey, so I'm trans and his eyes like opened up wide. He like pulled up his fist and was like, you're trans? What the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me? We're still not part of like the traditional narrative of what life is. You would never expect to bring a trans person to your household to introduce them to your parents. And I think that's part of like the violence really. Like we need to just be seen as people. Loving people who are trans doesn't have a good word yet. You're attracted to someone of the same gender. You're attracted to someone of another gender. You're attracted to either gender. Nowhere in there does it allow for being attracted to someone who's transgender, non-binary, genderqueer, a, a mix of the two. For me, a pronoun is a sound. And what I'm listening to in that sound is um, I'm listening for respect and I'm listening for intent. So like, if, if you want to address me and you're doing it respectfully and you call me like him or they, you can call me it, I don't care. As long as what you're trying to say is something that is respectful. I'm like seeing this girl right now and she's a, another trans girl. And like, it's like a dream. And I feel really beautiful when she tells me I am. You know, I'm literally naked in bed and someone's telling me that I look good. While there's like so many systems and people in the world that judge me for having that very body. In my first book, I said we need to do away with gender and I'm clarifying it now. We need to do away with enforcing gender. Someone wants to be a man, okay, you're a man. Someone wants to be a woman, great, be a woman. Enjoy the hell out of it. Someone wants to be neither, have a ball. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Rain Dove. My name is Kate Bornstein. My name is Maria Jose. And the myth about gender that I'd like to dispel is that it's real. The end. Nice. <laughs>